Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a very simple XSplit Gamecaster setup guide. So the first thing that we're going to do is to set up our microphone and our webcam. So to do that, we go up to the top right hand corner, click on settings, and then we're going to go down to devices. So here you can select your microphone and your webcam from your computer. In this case, you're going to want to click on the microphone drop down and find the one that you're actually going to record with. So I'm not using my default laptop microphone. I'm actually using the one from my headset. So that's why I have this USB audio device selected. Obviously, you can see that when I'm talking to it, that there are audio levels coming through. That's what you want to see. And after you've selected that, you can choose your webcam from the drop down list. So in this case, I'm going to be using the laptop webcam. So just select that there. And later, when you actually set up the scene, it should actually use that webcam as the default. Next, we also need to make sure that Gamecaster is linked to the accounts that we actually want to stream on. So generally, that would be YouTube or Twitch or Facebook Gaming now has a thing nowadays. So you can click on accounts here and make sure that your account is authenticated. If you see a connect to Twitch or connect to YouTube button, click on that. And Gamecaster will take you to an online page for that site where you authenticate by logging in, connect it to Gamecaster. And once you've done that, you should see your username for that account pop up here. And then you'll be able to use it to stream too. So with that set up, I'm going to close this settings dialog. And then the quickest way to set up our scenes is going to be using one of the default themes. So if you click over here on the top left to the themes tab, there's a whole bunch of gaming themes that you can use that will give you a main scene for gaming a startup screen before you actually go live and a intermission break screen. Click on this new anthem theme and add it to my project. In, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see start main intermission. If you only want main, you can uncheck start and intermission. But if you want to just have all three scenes so that you can switch between them, then just leave all of them checked. You can delete them later if you need to. So I'm going to hit add to studio. Now, once we've done that, a new scene will be created. So you can see in the top left, it's automatically been given this Don Surf name. And in the background, it's loading up the files for this Gamecaster scene. So once everything's loaded, there should be three scenes that you can switch between. And you can see the differences between them. The start scene, obviously, you would use that before you're actually ready to start gaming. Main scene would be when you're actually streaming. And then intermission, when you don't have a game going, this can give you a background just to have filling the screen. If we click on the main scene here, you'll notice that in the top left hand corner that there's a social media icon there. In this case, that's player.me. You can switch that over to YouTube or Twitch account and give it a name there. So you probably want to advertise your user ID. If you want to edit that or any other setting, then you want to hover over your scene and click on the little edit icon so that looks like a pencil. Okay, so when we open up the scene, you'll see that there's already a whole bunch of widgets that have been added by default. So a lot of these widgets are alerts for things that may happen on your stream, such as gaining a new follower or receiving a tip. And of course, you can add more widgets later on if you need them by hitting the add widget button. So there may be a type of alert. So when we open up this template scene, we can change pretty much any of the widget settings around the screen. So all of these boxes, such as the camera source in the bottom left hand corner and these widgets that show information, such as who the most recent follower is or what the top tip on the stream has been. Those are all widgets we can customize, delete or move around. So for instance, if I want to move the camera from the bottom left to the bottom right, I can left click on it and drag it over there. There's also tools such as the corner boxes for scaling the webcam up and down. And you can click on the little circle at the top of a widget to rotate it if you need to. So I mentioned the social media icon in the top left hand corner. So let's go ahead and customize that. So if I left click on it, you'll see that it's the social icon widget here. And there are properties that we can edit below the widget selector such as in this case, the social icon. So if I want to advertise my YouTube account because I'm streaming to YouTube, then I can click on social icon player.me and change that from player.me to YouTube. And you'll see now it has a YouTube account. We can also double click on the text area if we want to customize it. You'll see that right now it's using my default username using the uh, brackets to grab that information and automatically post that there. But if I wanted to customize this, such as maybe add an apostrophe, I can just erase that username and then do Chris tutorials, click away from it, and it should be good to go. 
Next, something you might want to do is test the scene and make sure that your notifications are working. So there's a test button in the top right next to save. Uh, we can save for now, since we did make a change, and I'll click on test to open up the test editor. And when you're in here, you'll be able to click on test notifications for any widget that you have added to your scene. So by default, this Anthem theme has a lot of default widgets, but you may want to add in one for something like Raid if you're doing a Twitch stream. So I can click on any of these and get a test notification to pop up there, and you'll see exactly how it should look when you actually go live with the stream. So here you can see I clicked a few more times for a subscriber notification. And there is a bit of a delay with these because obviously it can only display one notification at a time. Uh, but the follower one should be coming up soon. And there you have it. So if you want to change how any of that text information is displayed or add a new type of widget in, then you'll be able to find that with this add widget button in the top left hand corner. But if you just want to use the basic layout for now, then we should be good. Just make sure you go ahead and hit save if you've made any changes and then close out of the scene editor. Before you actually stream to a service, you'll need to have a game open. So in the background here, I'll go ahead and open a game. So here I have Hearthstone loading in the background and you can see that XSplit Gamecaster, once you click into that window, will automatically pull that and use it as your background. So if your widgets look good, your webcam set up the way you want it, you have your microphone working, then at the middle bottom of Gamecaster, you can select the service you want to stream to. So in this case, I have a little warning sign here because I don't have a streaming service selected. So I need to click that, select the account I want to stream to. In this case, I'll just check the YouTube and close that window out. And when you're ready, you can hit the stream button. Alternatively, if you just want to record to your local computer, you can use the record button as another option. And of course, you can use these in conjunction if you want to record to your local hard drive, but also to stream to an online service like Twitch or YouTube. So when you click the stream button, you'll just need to put in some information about your scene. So before you go live, just make sure you give it a title, a description, any tags that you might need. And I would say as a point of practice, before you actually change the privacy to public, you should start private here. And then when you go live, you can check your live page on your YouTube dashboard or twitch.tv dashboard. Make sure that the stream is being received there properly. And then on those live pages, once you've confirmed that the video information is being received there properly, you can go ahead and change the status there from private to public so that people can actually see what's going on in your live stream and you can actually get viewers and interact with them and all that jazz. So one more thing, by default, it's gonna be streaming in 720p if you're using YouTube. So you may want to go into the settings one more time and customize your streaming settings. So if we click on our username and go to settings, you can see your streaming service. As long as you're not streaming, you'll be able to change it from automatic to custom. And here you can select a resolution and a bit rate. So you can increase this depending on how fast your computer and your internet is. It's one of those things that you'll need to test and make sure that when you bump up the resolution or you increase the bit rate, that when you actually have it streaming to the streaming service, that it still looks good. It's not choppy. It doesn't look like video information is being missed. So if you need to customize those settings, that's where you can do it. And we can just close that out. So that's pretty much going to be it for the bare bones basics of how to get things working in XSplit Gamecaster if you want to do some live streaming of gaming. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.